Hey everybody, so I have my first uh, kind of call out here. Not really, but you can kind of call it a little uh, half call out, I guess. Let's just say my integrity is being questioned a little bit. Um, we'll go over that in just a moment. So I get a message from an old friend of mine that my name has been mentioned on the Mind Shock podcast, which I've heard of, but I've never watched it or listened to it, I should say. So many, or maybe I have once or twice in the past years ago. I don't know. There are so many different podcasts on the case that sometimes like it gets hard to keep track of them. So I go ahead and give it a listen, and two cartoon voices pop up, and uh, one of them at least starts to kind of question my integrity right after he asks for donations on a podcast that's supposed to be about a missing girl, of course. So after he asks for your money, he starts questioning uh, me. And um, making it sound like maybe I'm staging things. Um, And what he's talking about, of course, is the fact that Barbara Atwood and I have the same last name, her maiden last name. Now, we'll put that aside for a second. I I don't know. I know one of the hosts' name is Maxwell. I don't know if that which one of the two that is because one of them was extremely reasonable. But the one that isn't, he kind of sounded like the main host who was leading the conversation. He's just talking about everything is a coincidence. He he sounds like one of these conspiracy guys. Let let me just say, people, that has its place um, because you want to turn over every stone, especially in a case like this. But when you start doing that with everything, that's probably one of the reasons that this case is stuck in the mud like it is. When you start splitting hairs that don't need to be split and turning everything into a possible conspiracy, you just start sending people down roads that just waste hundreds upon hundreds of hours. And, of course, this is one of them. And what I'm talking about is the fact that me and Barbara have the same last name. Now, if it wasn't extremely evident on the interview that I'm finding out for the first time, I don't know if if these guys think we're like Academy Award-winning actors here or, or what's going on, but it's very obvious I'm finding out then that, um, that that's the case. Um, so... So I'm losing my train of thought here. I'm, look, I'm looking over my notes. I just listened to this a couple minutes ago. But um, let me tell you real quick how I found her. And obviously I have to leave some details out because, uh, you know, she, she, she needs her privacy. But I grew up with a few friends when I was a kid and lost touch with them. And before Facebook and MySpace and all these things started popping up or before everyone had them anyway, I went looking for for uh, my friends and I got pretty good at kind of piecing together little details and finding people and that's what I did with Barbara and to be honest with you it wasn't very difficult Um, it was much harder finding my old friends but that's kind of where I acquired the skill to do it and that's what I did when when I found her now I find it funny because as he's questioning everything making everything sound like a conspiracy talking about how he needs proof um, and then starts listing things like he thinks the accident stage where there's no proof or uh, he thinks that uh, you know I'm lying about how I found Barbara, which there was no proof. Um, obviously, you know, he he says um, something along the lines of, "I wonder if these other PIs have." And I'm not a PI, by the way, but that's kind of how he starts referring to all of people looking at the case. And he says, "I wonder if these guys have actually done their research." And he says this when he's talking about whether or not Butch was um, actually coming from a ski trip. Well. He's questioning if we've done our research, but he obviously didn't do much of his research on me, which he should have if you were going to dedicate whatever it is, 10 minutes or so of your podcast to talk about my interview, because if you think I'm related to Barbara and uh, that's how the... Uh, if you, oh, I'm sorry. If you think I knew her beforehand, which I don't think we are related, by the way, I, I can't find any connection other than the name. We don't have any. We don't seem to have any similar relatives. But anyways, if you think... If you think that um, that's how I knew her, why didn't you go and look back a couple weeks before I interviewed her? My videos are all accusing Butch. That's why I went out and tried to find her because my I was very heavy-handed about it. My primary theory was that Butch was guilty at first. So the reason I wanted to talk to Barbara was I wanted to see if she would say something now that he was gone, let something slip. I didn't know at first. So to act like I just kind of knew her and set up, set up this whole thing and, oh, we're going to act like we're just meeting, that's ridiculous. And that's something you have no proof on since you are someone that says you, you have to have proof to believe. 
Another conspiracy theory. Theory He can't confirm if it really is Barbara, although he does mention that people close to the family seem to think it is. It is. I've been in contact with the family, representatives of the family. I've put them in contact with Barbara, and they've interviewed her themselves for their own personal information because that's what's important is the family getting the information they need to find her. So I didn't go talking about it to everybody. It, it, it doesn't really matter. But yes, it is her, and people close to the case know that. Okay. Another thing, as far as saying it's odd that you know she doesn't know her neighbors, you have to remember, first off, even in 2004, People, most people don't know their neighbors nowadays. I mean, this isn't the 1950s where everyone's hanging out. And I, I lived in nine different houses in my life, and in seven of them, I don't think I knew one of my neighbors. And of those two, one of them was my family house that it, where people had been there for generations, so that's how we knew each other. And the other one was in Orlando, Florida. We lived there for, I don't know, three, three four months, whatever it was. And uh, we didn't know our neighbors there either until we had a hurricane that knocked out all the power. And it was so hot in the houses without AC, we were out barbecuing for like 13 days until they fixed the power. So we were all best friends hanging out, having barbecue block, par block party barbecues. Then when the power went back on, everyone went right inside. And we never spoke to anyone else again for the whole time we were there. So that is not that odd, particularly when you're talking about older people. They didn't have young kids playing in the neighborhood. These are just two older people that minded their business. So that really is not odd at all. I'm not saying everybody doesn't know their neighbors, but plenty of people don't, and there's nothing, there's nothing different about that. As for her saying Rick Forcier's lawn, um, the interview should have kind of told you this, but you have to realize... When this happened, she didn't think this was going to be a big deal. This was just a little car crash. She looked out the window maybe once and went on about her night. That's why she doesn't know a ton of stuff. Doesn't know a ton of details. And first off, people close to the family actually believe that, which you mentioned in your podcast, that she might have managed to move the car up and down a little bit along the ditch, but she just couldn't get out of it. So that could be a reason why Barbara has said that she saw it in a different place. Another reason is Barbara has actually said to me, because I've, I've talked to her many times since that initial interview, that if the car, now that she knows where they're saying the car was, she must not have saw it. She thought she did when she looked out quick, but she must not have saw it. So maybe it moved and she did see it, or maybe she didn't see that car. Maybe she just saw a car parked along the side of the road. Or, I mean, who knows? But um, again, this has been 15 years, and she's a little older. She has a life to live. In fact, she didn't even know this was a huge case until I called her, and she's, she's been all over it since then, reading everything. She's probably listened to your podcast since then. So as for her recalling it's daylight, like you said in your podcast, yes, the reason she thought that is because it's been 15 years, and she just remembered that they always finished at daylight. So because she knew Butch was coming home in the bus, in her mind, he always came home at day. So that's why she thought that there's no conspiracy there. Um, you also, this is not true at all, but you, says, you said that Barbara said she didn't know Butch went and searched. That's not true at all. She tells me he went out and looked for her. So I don't know where you got that from, but you misheard something. Probably not intentional, but I wanted to clear that up. Um, okay, so some other things you said that aren't true. You said, we don't have a female on site without Butch Atwood. That's something you use for the conspiracy theory that maybe it isn't really Mora. It's not true at all. Faith Westman sees Mora out the window, gathering stuff at her trunk, running around the car. So Mora is seen by more than just Butch. So that's a false narrative that if you take away Butch's testimony, there's no girl there. Not true. Don't know if that was a mistake or intentional, but you should fix that. Uh, you also said, Barbara said, Butch walked to the Saturn. Uh, it's very clear in the interview that when she says he parked and went over, I say to her, oh, I thought he talked to her first, then parked. And she right away says, oh, maybe. I'm not sure. She's not 100% sure. He hadn't even gotten in the house yet when Butch had talked to her. So she didn't know if he parked and walked over or, again, this was something that just happened quick. And she didn't 100% she didn't know. So I don't know why you would have thought that because it was cleared up one second later. All right, so reports say he parked, uh, this is what you said, reports say he parked the bus different, but she says he parked it normally, kind of fishy. You must not have been listening to exactly what was being said. Reports, the reports in her both said that he parked the bus exactly the same, that he backed it in. What differed is that people were saying he normally didn't park it that way, that he normally parked it in the front. 
So what she was saying is that, no, he always parked it in by backing it in like he did that night. So she's not saying he parked it differently than anyone else is saying it. She's simply saying that that is how he always parked it, that there was no difference there. She was the one that parked it in the front. He backed it in. Okay. Uh, lastly, let me see. Okay. And you also mentioned that she seems to think most people think more was picked up. Uh, in my additional 10 questions um, that Barbara answers, I explain this quite a bit. That's what the neighborhood thought, simply because nobody could figure out how a girl just vanished. So the natural inclination was someone must have picked her up. Who knows? That's the only reason. There, there's, no, there's nothing fishy, weird, conspiracy, coincidences, nothing like that. So as for me and Barbara having the same last name, um, I don't believe we're related, although I'm still not 100% sure. But how I found her was by finding her online. I had messaged, I had messaged her account online. And I had sent her a text, didn't hear from her. And, all, and I said, I think I just said, hey, Barb, because I wanted to keep it very conversational. I wanted to see if she would respond. After like five days, she responded via cell phone. I then asked her a question, something along the lines of, did Cecil and Butch know each other? And um, she didn't even know, she didn't know the name, the cop's name was Cecil. So she said something along those lines. And that was... I was and then I said, "Can I call you and you know and uh, do an interview or talk to you or whatever?" She said, "Yeah." So when I initially called, she must she must have put two and two together that somebody messaged her online saying, "Hey Barb," and somebody texted her saying, "Hey Barb," because when I was calling her, I didn't even know that she knew my name because I had never told her my name via phone. She must have just saw, "Hey Barb" from. You know, from from her account and from her phone, and said, "Oh, this is the same guy who would who would who would be randomly contacting me at the same time." So again, there's no conspiracies here, guys. Don't don't. I don't mean to be mean back to you, but I mean, c come on, it, it, it's it's so very clear. It, 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 when you do that and you sit there and act like everything's a big conspiracy, it just starts throwing everybody off more. So, anyways, that's my response, guys. Have a good one.